in ultra running, just like in life, if you want to grow and improve, you have to set yourself some ambitious goals. Some goals that when you look at them, you're thinking, hmm, not sure I can do this. Well, for running, what it means is finding the right race for you. That race that you're like, wow, this is such a cool race, this is so inspiring. But you're a little scared. A little scared because you know that if you were doing it tomorrow, not sure you would finish. But in the next 6 to 12 months, you're going to work towards that, you're going to train, you're going to prepare. And when you're going to look back, you'll see the progress that you've made. And for that, you need to find the right race. But it's getting more and more difficult to find that race because there are more and more race and there's so many things to factor in. Well, today I want to help you there. I want to help you find the right race for you. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to walk you through how I look at different race and what are the factors that one could consider. And also towards the end, I'm going to walk you through my top five race that are my favorite, which I highly recommend. So let's dive right in. Hi, my name is Simon. I've raced 3,300 miler in the past three years and a half, and it's this time of the season again. It's planning season. We're looking forward to next year, what race we're doing. And that can be a little bit stressful, but today I want to help you uh, select the right race for you. And I think one of the biggest question is, what is a good challenge for you? So what is ambitious, but not impossible? Something that you'll need to work hard towards, but there is a realistic shot at it. So for example, if you've never run in your life and you want to win the gold medal at the next year's Olympic, I don't think that's a realistic goal for you. And this question in ultra running goes around a lot of what's the distance that is right for you. Are you ready for this distance? And this is a two-parter. Uh, this is part two. I suggest you have a look at part one where I walk you through the different distances, how they feel, and what are the challenges that you're facing beyond just running itself and what's the preparation that goes into different distance. But today, what we're doing is going into the specific. The key factors that I look at in a race to decide that this is a race I want to do. Do you prefer a smaller race or a bigger race? Do you want a famous race or you want this little niche experience? At the end of the day, these factors, it's all personal. So here is more a path to reflection that I'm providing. But at the end of the day, what matters is what you prefer, what's the experience you want to have. And even myself, there's different experience that I want to have. Some, sometimes I want to have that big race, that big feeling like Havelina, big party, so many people. And sometimes I want the more cozy, homey feeling of a local race. What do I want as an experience? for this race and you can do different things and I think that's the beauty of ultra running is that races are extremely different it also depends on what's your goal here what are you <laughs> yay um, it depends a little bit of what's your goal here what's the experience that you're seeking and we're not judging here um, I, I walk you kind of the community guideline any goal is beautiful so if you want to have a big race that is famous that's not necessarily my style but sure you know there, there are some races out there that are pretty famous that's fine but maybe you want something where people are more social maybe you want something um, that feels more personal and I'm gonna finish by walking you through my top five race that that I've raced I think the most common question that I have is what's your favorite race and to me that sounds like asking someone what's your favorite meal it depends on my mood a little bit sometimes it could be ice cream sometimes it could be pizza sometimes I want a mountain race and sometimes I want to race in the desert because of that my top five I try to not have five races that are too similar to each other but showing the wide breadth of type of experience that you could have and I'm gonna walk you through a little bit how they felt to see is that the vibe I'm looking for is that the experience I'm looking for and is this a race that when I'm training when I'm putting in these hard hours thinking about this wow this is so cool that will drive you to push a little further and that's why picking the right race is actually a very key component of growing as an ultra runner something that you will be dreaming of so where to begin um, if you're new to the sport you don't really have that list in your head of like oh these are the cool races in September October so where do you go to find that list well I'm gonna run a 50 mile next year that's step number one step number two is when will you be ready? Are we thinking spring, summer, winter? Um, 
because the type of race that you will select at different time of the year obviously are different you're not gonna have mountain race in the middle of winter maybe there are but that's kind of hardcore and then you combine these you combine the distance and you combine the more or less when and you go on ultra sign up.com and that's where you have almost all of the race are in there and you can browse to, through them and then you have a list but this is just a name you have no clue at least you know where it is in terms of the state the distance and the period of the year you can even click on last year result and see how many runner did it so that's giving a little bit of information but the Obviously, a big place to look is on YouTube, on channel of people like me uh, that take the time to to convey the experience they've had, uh, and that gives you a good sense of what type of race you're looking at. Just the landscape, the trail, and you'll get a lot of information. All ultra marathons are difficult, but some are. <laughs> it's just some are kind of difficult, and some are difficult. And there's a huge gap between that, even at the same distance. My hardest 100 mile took me 50 hours and it was a good race. My fastest was 16 hours. There's a 3x factor in there and that's because one was around a stadium on flat in good weather. The other one was extreme condition. So do factor the difficulty and the way to, to gauge that is you can look at what's the DNF rate. We often think about the course itself is it you know the distance obviously but the elevation gain but there are things like that matter a lot like technicality um elevation gain is one thing but how steep are those climb when are they during the day and the night and a big one that i think is 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 the most important is how much time do you have to do that i could race almost anything but with the tight cutoff, hmm, I need to think about it a little bit more. So there are races, for example, I think Leadville 100 is a good example of a race that the course itself is difficult, but not the most difficult out there. But 30 hour, yeah, you gotta run. You gotta run fast because it's gonna be tight. If it was 36 hour, the, the race would be the same course, but so much easier. Personally, I don't like a race that is difficult because of the cutoff but I like a race that is difficult because of the course so a race that really matches that very well for me was Sedona 125 it's a beautiful course and it's challenging but you have 75 hours and that means that you likely won't need to be too nervous about cutoff you take your time if you want to walk you can walk you just got to keep moving and that's a feeling that is great to not have to worry about that to just have to worry about getting there what type of terrain am i looking at and climate in general and i love mountain race i love a little bit colder weather <laughs> which can sound funny when you look at my running resume with bad water and javelina and these races in the heat but I like variety, so there are races like Zion that, for me, the, 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 the landscape and the views are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you have Uray, which is polar opposite in terms of type of landscape, but absolutely gorgeous. So that's a key factor for me, and you'll often see in my videos, I do take the time to, to show how does it look, because I'm not the biggest fan of a race where you're in the forest all the time and you don't really have views. That's not really my vibe. What I'm looking at is beautiful scenery uh, and climate all over the place then and directly factored to the difficulty you have the trail technicality and there there's a huge gap between running on pavement running on a dirt road or gravel road dirt road then you have maybe a bike path then you have trail then you have single track and then you have those oh my god <laughs> kind of trail and I think for that for me I like that it's not the oh my god type of trail that you can't even run anymore uh, I like when it's a little technical but at least sometimes you can disconnect a little bit and just be in the flow then you have to look at the elevation profile more elevation does not necessarily mean harder I think steeper means harder but there is a correlation so uh, a flat course would be somewhere between zero and eight thousand feet that's considered pretty flat and, and for a guy like me that means probably when I come in the race like that I'm really aiming for a sub 24 then you have race that I would call a little bit more hilly a little bit so either you have a big climb but it's mostly flat the rest of the time or you always have rolling hills so these would be eight to fifteen thousand 
this is where for me it's kind of borderline. A, a sub 24 is possible, but I need to have a good day. Then you go to race that I would call mountain race. It's these races like Wasash, for example, or the Bear. Uh, some runnable segment, but overall your legs will be extremely tired and usually those cutoffs are a little bit broader. Uh, so difficult race, uh, but also very pleasant and usually that's associated with amazing views. Then you have hardcore race and hardcore race are mountain race on steroids. Uh, and these will be your, your UTMB, your hard rock, so 25 to 35 feet of gain. You're walking a lot of that. Sorry, power hiking. You're power hiking a lot of it <laughs> and then you have crazy race like ura 100 is more than 40,000, and this is a, oh my god type of race uh you're almost never <laughs> running you really need to go and do hills training strengthening exercise getting used to power hiking sleep management you spend a little bit of time there if you're lucky and you can have say a week of vacation maybe you're there one week before or one week after maybe some hiking or just discovering the area so the destination actually matters a lot and that matters for different reason so i think sometimes it can be a place that you just want to go in the area especially if you're you, you know I, I bring nara i bring my wife zion is a great place because we can go hiking it's beautiful in the area we love colorado so any race in colorado Kind of get bumps up on my list very quickly because then we can visit some friend and some spend some time in the mountain which is something that we love to do together how hard is it to get there i i think there's a huge difference between something for example that is local and you can drive there maybe three four hours it's much simpler than a race you need to fly across a country or to a different country rent a car drive somewhere and just it adds a lot of complication to it and beyond complication and that's another factor is the cost it gets expensive if you race a hundred mile every month and the cost itself yeah you can look at the registration fee but the bulk of the money you spent racing if you travel for these races, will be the travel will be lodging will be gear so yes the registration fee matters but you have to consider the, the the whole cost of the race and there's definitely some race for me that have been way more expensive and that's definitely factoring in the fact that I'm probably not gonna do that again but one of the thing that ticks me about the registration fee that is too high is not so much about the money that comes out of my pocket but sometimes it can reflect the spirit of the organizers and that's another factor is Who's organizing that? You want to have an organization that is reliable, that is well organized. If it's the first time they do a race, watch out. You, you can expect that there will be some snag along the route and that could make it difficult. Maybe they won't have enough water. Um, doesn't mean don't try a race that is th at their first year. I've done that and I had a great experience doing that. But that race also the year after decided to, I think, add three hours to the cutoff because not so many people finish that race so who's organizing do they have experience and do you align with their value there's obviously been a lot of controversy lately about a certain race organization and the way they behave and some people are upset about that some people are not upset about that but you can ask yourself there's so many options out there that the, the the money that goes out of your pocket goes to someone and is it someone or an organization and is it someone or an organization that make the sports better or not. An example of a race organization that I very much love is Aravaipa Running. Really suggest you have a look. Their races are top quality all the time. The vibe is great. People are friendly. They are friendly. Um, it, it's just a very high quality and they have a lot of different options. But local race too uh, that you know, it's not a race organization per se, but it's race director that are very positive and they do it for the love of the sport. And beyond this, uh, who's organizing the race, sometimes that will reflect how big the race is. There's really a, a, a nice homey feeling to this small local race, 30 people, you know everyone. At the aid station, these are often loops and you'll know the people at the aid station, they're there for 30 hours supporting you. Like how cool is that? That is really enriching your experience in terms of meeting people the, the smaller the field the more personal it gets at the same time big races are pretty cool you have 500 people the 
atmosphere, the energy is just amazing. You might have a lot of pro runner in there. They're shooting for a golden ticket and you see them run by and that is so cool. And that, that also creates a lot of energy. So they're both great. But what do you want? I think the association to that is what's the vibe of this event. And I think ultra running, the, the, the vibe is very often similar. I think I, I can see the difference more in, in different sports, but still you have that in ultra running. And is it more of a, we're hardcore doing hardcore things? Or is it more like, hey, what's up? And like, let's wear a silly costume or there's like shots at the aid station, which I would never take in a race. <laughs> I don't know who does that actually because that sounds like a terrible idea. That sounds like a great way to puke, by the way. But th this vibe, is that what you're looking for? Or that will disturb you when you're, you know, you're in the pain cave and, and it becomes very serious because running an ultra marathon is a big deal. It's not easy. And I enjoy this atmosphere, but not necessarily everyone. That's totally understandable. There's different format. Are you looking for a fixed distance or a fixed time, you know, a 24 hour, 12 hour or a 100 mile, 100K, different vibe, a backyard ultra. And even if you go in a distance type of race, then there will be race that will be more of a small loop, maybe uh, even around the track or uh, a one mile loop, for example, at jackpot or something that is a, you know, this, this is more like a baby loop, but you have bigger loops like, um, cold water or javelina which are 20 miles loop so it's not as repetitive but there is advantage to that it's you're gonna be back at the same place quite a few times so you can have a nice drop bag and logistic it's, it's just much simpler your crew can be there it's simpler for them so there's advantages but personally what I like more is when it's either an in and out like a 50 mile in and out but the best of the best is either a big ass loop like Zion 100 or a point to point, like you know, mid-state massive. You start and you cross the state. Like, how cool is that? And the last factor, I keep it last, but it's probably the most important, but it's also the hardest to describe is the X factor, that little je ne sais quoi, that makes a race unique for you. And I think, for example, for me, Leadville, it's very special. It's very special because we go there, we go to Leadville, and we meet our Colorado friend. And at this point, you know, it's almost a tradition spending some time together. There are some other races that could be just a wild wow factor, you know, Western state. You know, it's a historical race. The best of the best have been racing there. And that, that little thing that is hard to describe, you will have, you know, little stars in your eyes that will help you push further and that will help you accomplish amazing things. There's nothing worse then signing up for a race and be like, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm not really excited about it. No, that X Factor, you'll be so soaked about it. You, you, you will do everything to get there. And sometimes, you know, I've mentioned some of those races, like Western State. Hey, if you want to run Western State, well, you have to think strategically about other races that you need to do before that. And it's more of a long-term goal than a short-term goal. These dream race. And I have my dream race. Uh, the big one for sure is Hard Rock for me. You know, I, I very much dream about that. Tour des Géants. Oh, I want to do that so badly. Diagonal des Fous. It's just so far and hard to do. But, wow, that would be so amazing. And I even having race 33 100 miler I still have these things and that little like you feel like a kid in a candy store that's how I'll feel racing these races and I can't wait to do that and I hope you can find that exciting race and now we're doing it top five race from my experience so I only consider race that I've actually done number five so I had to pick race those hidden gem um, so that you can have a look at them and there's two of them uh, one is Samo 100 it was the first year that uh, they ran it when I did uh, a few years back it was an absolutely amazing course, uh, very difficult, it was very hot, the cutoffs were hardcore, and there was a lot of elevation gain. But I love the fact that you could see the ocean sometimes from the mountain. You always had a beautiful, gorgeous view because it's the type of mountain where you have more bushes than trees, uh, which means you have a, a clear sky. Uh, to well a clear view at everything all the time and it was a small field race uh, a big in and out uh, so I love also the format of running again what you did but also going pretty far aid station were amazing race director is so funny um, so it was a beautiful experience uh, amazing experience but 
it was tough. It was very tough. As I said, no trees, so no cover. Uh, and it's in Southern California, close to LA, so it was hot. It was really hot. Um, I think the DNF rate was 70%, so a challenging race. And the other one that was a small field that is close to my heart, I just loved it. It was Lou Garou in Louisiana in December. It's a loop course, 20 miles. You run in these, um, in these uh, swamps uh, on bridge, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's so special. It's very, very special how it looks there. And it was one of these races, very small race, but aid station volunteer. I remember singing with them uh, at one point because I had my shark hat and we were just singing, we were just happy and it was just a great experience. A small feel, you know, you finish the race uh, in the middle of the night and there's a race director that just hang out there for so long. She does it because she loves it. Uh, she's awesome. And then you, you chit chat and it was just a great experience, an experience that you don't get with these bigger races. Number four is Havelina 100. I've done it I think four times and we're going every year now. It's a tradition at this point and I saw the race grow to an incredible <laughs> race. Um, it's a very unique experience and that's the thing with this race. What makes it amazing is the experience. I think the course is, mm, it's all right. Uh, it's a 20 mile loop uh, in the desert close to Phoenix. It's really, really hot. It's not very technical. It's not a, a mountainous course. It's pretty flat. It's a very fast course. What makes it such a big event is, well, there's live stream and now it's a golden ticket race. So that means that Pro Runner will come to get a ticket for Western State. So you have the best of the best. And because it's a loop course, well, they will pass you twice. <laughs> they go fast. They go so fast. And it's amazing. And if you're not someone who's gunning for a golden ticket like myself, you go in there and you wear a costume, which is also silly, but just adds to the overall experience and the uniqueness of this race. Number three, two races that are very similar. So I couldn't pick one, the Bear and Wasash. They're both amazing mountain race. Point to point, so it's a great adventure. You really feel you cross the whole mountain range and it will be challenging. It will be very challenging, that last climb. Whoa, whoa. the race are good size very well organized good support but you, you need to have i think experience and in both case absolutely amazing views in both case you you really get to experience either the wasash range or the bear i don't know the mountain range and maybe i should have looked before filming but <laughs> you go towards bear lake and there are mountain before that if you know gun to my head i need to pick one i would pick the bear and it's mostly because it's a few weeks later and that's when the leaves are turning and are very colorful and that creates for beautiful and unique sceneries. Number two, and number two could be number one, but uh, I had to decide like that. And number two is Zion 100. Zion 100 also has a lot of different distances. So if you're not necessarily trying to do a hundred miles, they have a hundred K I think and a 50, no, 50 K and you know, you should look at the website, but they have different, you know, I have it here. Um, they have different distances and actually the shirt is wrong because there's no 50 mile. It's close to Zion, it's not in Zion itself, but it's it's that type of scenery, but it's more, Zion is more in the valley, whereas this is outside and you have these gorgeous mesa. And the course for the 100 mile is a huge loop where you go to different mesa and then you run over on the mesa and you have this amazing view of the whole landscape around you. Then you go down, you go to another one, you go around and same thing. And what is crazy about this is that you run 100 mile, which is really far, but you have such a clear field of view that you can see where, oh, that's where I was this morning, that's where we're going later. Absolutely amazing. Um, it's pretty hot though, so that's something to keep in mind and it's a pretty difficult course I think but the 36 hour cutoff is pretty generous uh, making it I believe kind of beginnerish Friendly for a hundred mile very good support great aid station great food over there and good vibe in general and Number one is probably not a surprise, but it's Ure 100 which is in Colorado in the southwest in the San Juan if you go in Colorado I think the San Juan is hands down the most amazing place. Uh, I love Colorado in general, but it's 
absolutely gorgeous and wild mountain range over there. You can have so much fun. So just for the destination, Ure is perfect. And what makes Ure a great race for me is it ticks all the box that I care about. So it's an area that I want to visit. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous. It's some of the most beautiful hikes I've ever done. It's just that instead of doing one, you do 13 <laughs> in a row. So sometimes you're like, oh, that's a little tricky. Uh, it's extremely challenging, so much elevation gain, more than 40,000, making it the perfect challenge. The vibe is great. The field is, I want to say about 100 runner. So not that big, uh, which is a, a vibe that I very much enjoy. Um, it's not exactly an in and out. Uh, you kind of go all over the place over there. So it's absolutely gorgeous. There, there's really nothing negative about it other than it is hardcore. It is the toughest race I've ever done. There's no question there. There's nothing that comes close to it. It's technical. You will face hardcore weather. You always, always are climbing super steep. And, and you're expected to be able to be fairly independent out there. You'll be out without aid station sometimes for three, four hours easily. Uh, even the last segment is, I think, 11-ish mile, and that takes like four hours, five hours, it's it's difficult. But that's that's what's great about it too. And I said it at the beginning, to grow you need these challenges. And what makes you race so great is, I actually don't know, if I'm racing it this year, I don't know if I'm gonna finish. I really don't know. I've done it before, I had a good day. Would I finish next year? I don't know. And this level of unknown, Pushing my limit is something that I'm seeking beyond just the experience, beyond just the scenery. It's this challenge, this ambitious challenge that I cannot take for granted that I will finish. But I will give my best and I will prepare for it. So that's it folks. Uh, this is how I look at different rays, the factors that goes in making my schedule for next year. It's almost ready. I'm going to make a video about that. But my question to you is, what about you? What are you racing next year? I hope it was helpful. I hope it will help you find a race that is inspiring. And I want to hear about it when you're done with it. Until then, see you next time.